You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but if you just keep moving, you will come to a better place. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Now, there are many powerful players in Avatar The Last Airbender, from Zuko to Toph to the Avatar himself, but none are more crucial than Iroh, the actual MVP of the series. Here's why. Now, we will be spoiling the plot, so if you don't wanna know, go back to the shadow. Now, in the show, Uncle Iroh frequently plays the wise sage mentor archetype, counseling the younger characters in times of tribulation. Toph thinks you give pretty good advice and great tea. The key to both is proper aging. In Asian culture, the sage archetype is a revered character who embodies wisdom, enlightenment, and spiritual insight. They pop up in different Asian philosophies such as Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Most pop culture franchises that draw influence from Asian culture have a sage mentor, from Master Yoda, to Master Splinter, to Ugwe, to Mr. Miyagi, to... Come on, kids, you can do better than that. You got weight, use it, ready? Yeah! Oh, maybe not that guy. We see this archetype even in European folktales with characters like Merlin, Gandalf, and Dumbledore. These characters are vital to the protagonist's success, guiding them as they navigate their hero's journey. A case could be made that without them, our hero would fail. Would Arthur be the legend that he is if it weren't for Merlin taking him as a student? Where would Luke be without Yoda? The Jedi were practically extinct with Obi-Wan's death, so who would train him? Well, let me see. There's Ezra, Ahsoka, Cal Kestis. Nope, I don't count them in this lore, although we did do a great video about that, which you should really check out. Would Harry have defeated Voldemort without Dumbledore? If you could find them all, if you did destroy each Horcrux. Under destroys Voldemort. Dumbledore's pivotal role in Tom Riddle's downfall, including entrusting Harry with the task of destroying Voldemort's Horcruxes, engineering Snape as a protector, and leaving behind clues about the Deathly Hallows and his will for Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Iroh and Dumbledore share similar journeys in their respective series, with their past hardships as a driving force behind their mentor roles. Dumbledore and Iroh once sought power, and that driven passion cost them a family member. Being the grandson of Fire Lord Sozin and the son of Fire Lord Azulon, Iroh was the original heir to the throne before his younger brother Ozai leadership and murdered their father. At the time, Iroh was attempting to conquer the mighty Earth Kingdom of Ba Sing Se, but abandoned the effort once he lost his son, Lu Ten, in battle. <laughs> The tragedy of Iroh's past influences his decisions going forward, choosing not to challenge his brother for the throne and instead opting to be his nephew Zuko's companion as he hunts for the Avatar, a crucial decision that will determine the success of Team Avatar. Hey, I just want to say, I think it's really cool that we're finally getting to do Avatar videos. I think so too, man. A lot of you guys have been asking us to cover Avatar for a long time, and to celebrate Avatar, we have this new Avatar parody merch in our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com, such as this Bison as Jaw shirt, my personal favorite, the I lost my honor at the fire name and all I got was this lousy scar shirt and the parody Uncle Sam I want you for the Fire Nation army shirt. Guys, we're so happy to do videos like this and we can only do them because of the support and love that you give us here on the channel. And shopping our merch store is one of the best ways for you to directly support our channel and what we do here. We deeply appreciate you watching and supporting us. If you want to check it out, the links are below. So in season one, Iroh is more of an advisor and instructor to the Banished Prince who is approaching firebending with anxious energy. No, power in firebending comes from the breath not the muscles. Zuko's impatience mirrors Luke's when he first meets Yoda. No, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. Their feelings cloud their judgment, making them sloppy. Now, Iroh does his best to support his hot-headed nephew, fueled by the need to capture the Avatar so his father will restore his honor. He even comes to his nephew's defense when Zuko's crew is at a breaking point with him. I mean, who does Zuko think he is? Do you really want to know? Iroh sways the crew's opinion of his nephew by telling them how Zuko got his scar from his father in the Agni Kai after speaking out against his plan to bait skilled Earth Kingdom fighters with inexperienced Fire Nation soldiers. Capturing the Avatar is the only chance he has of things returning to normal. Iroh's love for his nephew is why he supports his hunt for the Avatar. He believes that if he can help Zuko, some of his honor will be restored. When the Fire Lord commands Admiral Zhao to hunt the Avatar, Zuko fears that he will never get to go home if he succeeds. So Iroh Iroh sneaks Zuko onto the ship after accepting a position under him at the siege of the Northern Water Tribe so he has a chance to capture him first. Ever since I lost my son. Uncle, you don't have to say it. I think of you as my own. So the Siege of the Northern Water Tribe is also where we see him stray from just supporting his nephew to being labeled a traitor to his nation. Iroh learns that Zhao intends to kill the Moon Spirit and he intervenes. Whatever you do to that spirit, I'll unleash on you tenfold. Let it go now. Heeding none of Iroh's warnings, Zhao kills the spirit Tweet, and Iroh attacks. When everyone seems at a loss for what to do, Iroh is the one to notice Prince Yue's connection with Tweet. You have been touched by the moon spirit. Some of its life is in you. 
Yes. She accepts her responsibility and becomes the new moon spirit to restore balance. For his defiance against Zhao, both Iroh and Zuko are deemed traitors and have to go into hiding in the Earth Kingdom from the Fire Nation. While they are being hunted by Zuko's sister, Azula, Zuko learns that Iroh has been part of a secret Masonic-like organization for a long time called the Order of the White Lotus. Being a Grand Master, you must know so many secrets. The members' dedication to each other and Iroh's high ranking as a Grand Lotus help to secure Zuko and Iroh's ticket into Ba Sing Se, where they can hide safely. I don't want to make a life here. Life happens wherever you are, whether you make it or not. This life is tested when Zuko discovers Aang is missing his fine bison. The temptation to capture the Avatar once again clouds his judgment. However, Iroh is not content to unquestioningly support his nephew's desires this time, and instead he confronts him when Zuko attempts to steal Appa as bait for Aang. You begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Splinter dealt with a similar problem with Raphael, who was angry and unsatisfied with where he was in his life. I have tried to channel your anger, Raphael, but more remains. Zuko, like Raphael, is about to make a choice fueled by frustration, and their father figures warn them what will happen should they lead with anger. If we look at Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, this would be around the trials of the inmost cave, where the hero is tested, typically with temptation for what they believe they want. Although Zuko does let Appa go, Azula dangles an even more tempting apple in front of him. I need you, Zuko. I've plotted every move of this day, this glorious day in Fire Nation history, and the only way we win is together. At the end of this day, you will have your honor back. You will have Father's love. You will have everything you want. Azula promises that Zuko will get his honor and go home if he helps her over his uncle. Zuko, I am begging you, look into your heart and see what it is that you truly want. It's frustrating for viewers because Team Avatar initially came to help Zuko, who was captured by his sister Azula. Like, why would you trust her? Are you nuts? <laughs> Plus, they only came because Iroh found them in Ba Sing Se and asked for their help. <sighs> Azula and Longfeng are plotting a coup. They're going to overthrow the Earth King. So who are you going to trust? The sister that has stabbed you in the back or the uncle that has kept you alive? Now let me see. Cheese, rat poison. Cheese, rat poison. Duh. Around here, in Campbell's timeline, Zuko enters the ordeal stage. This is the stage where the protagonist and their allies face their greatest challenge thus far, usually amid significant consequences. He has to make a choice, and he chooses to help Azula, ignoring his uncle, and attack Aang. Again. Because of this, Aang nearly dies. Iroh gets arrested, and it's all because of Zuko. You've got to get out of here! I'll hold them off as long as I can! If it weren't for Iroh, Team Avatar would not have escaped, and Katara would not have had the chance to save Aang with her spirit water from the north. Another season ends with Iroh intervening to give the Avatar another opportunity to defeat his own nation. This decision comes with a significant personal sacrifice in his relationship with his nephew. His choice to choose his nephew over contesting the throne has backfired on him. Zuko gets to go home to be a prince. Iroh gets to go to jail. Iroh, heartbroken but determined to bestow his nephew with one more piece of information, has a guard sneak a scroll into Zuko's room. There, it is revealed that Zuko's mother, who had been banished after helping his father seize the throne through treason, was a descendant of Avatar Roku. With the eclipse approaching, reality sinks in. Zuko has made a mistake. With this new knowledge, Zuko moves into the magic flight phase of the hero's journey, where they embark on a new mission. He will now leave the Fire Nation and become Aang's firebending teacher. Uncle Iroh's lesson has finally registered. The Fire Nation's quest for power has been driven by a more Western philosophy of happiness that believes that achievements and worldly possessions are what will make you content. At one point, Iroh believed, like his forefathers, that conquering other nations would bring him happiness. But instead, the desire for more conquest kept throwing the world off balance, and he lost his son. Both nephew and uncle have suffered severe consequences for their individual desires. Iroh and Zuko's responsibility is to help set things right by incorporating more of the Eastern philosophy of happiness into the world instead. Easterners tend to believe that happiness can be achieved by bringing balance within oneself and with others. They teach us to seek a middle path between extremes, and by doing so, we can reach a state of harmony that promote both mental and physical well-being. The only one that can end this war and bring this balance is the Avatar, a conclusion I believe Iroh came to when he was briefly with Aang. Top thinks you give pretty good advice and great tea. The key to both is proper aging. 
What's on your mind? Zuko's path to redemption is training the Avatar, something he could not do without the training that was given to him by Iroh. One key maneuver he taught Zuko is redirecting lightning, a technique that Iroh taught himself while studying waterbenders. This technique will be a lifesaver for the Avatar and Zuko when they both have their final boss fights. Iroh will also have his own final boss fight of sorts as well. Before the Great Earth Kingdom fell, he was content to hide in Ba Sing Se with his tea shop. Now, locked in his cell, he knows that he cannot just be a man who serves tea and plays pie Show. Knowing that he must also become proactive in this war, Iroh rebirths himself and comes out as Iroh the White, the general who must undo what he attempted and failed at long ago, Ba Sing Se. He escapes his cell during the eclipse and returns to the Earth Kingdom. Once he arrives, a summons goes out to the Order of the White Lotus to take back Ba Sing Se during Sozin's Comet. Team Avatar also seeks his counsel before Sozin's Comet when Aang goes missing, knowing no one else to turn to. Now this scene mirrors Gandalf's in Return of the King right before the Battle of Minas Tirith. As our hero's journey nears its climax, we find ourselves at the bottom of the night, a face poetically known as the return. Iroh assures everyone, even himself, that because self-enlightenment has been obtained within themselves, today is a day to restore balance. Iroh will take back the city he once thought he would conquer with the help of the Order of the White Lotus. Zuko will stop Azula from taking the throne as the new Fire Lord, and Aang will face Ozai and take away his bending. Oh, spoiler alert, I did warn you. Okay, you're right, you're right. Team Avatar emerges victorious, an outcome that surely would not have been possible if Zuko and Iroh hadn't switched sides. Ultimately, Iroh isn't just the series MVP because he's the wise old sage. He's the MVP because he's a mentor when someone needs guidance, a powerful bender when he's called to defend, a teacher when he needs to instruct, a cunning general when he needs to go into battle, a bearer of secrets when needs to protect what would be hunted, and a compassionate father when he needs to forgive. How can you forgive me so easily? I thought you would be furious with me. I was never angry with you. He knows what hat he needs to wear during each circumstance, and he wears them all with empathy and benevolence, which makes him the most influential character in the show. Yes, Aang is the one to defeat the Fire Lord, and Zuko is the one with the most compelling story arc, but I would argue that without his uncle's teachings and love, Zuko would not have become the honorable man that he was in Switch Sides. And this is why Iroh is the true MVP of Avatar The Last Airbender. Big shout out to the writer of this episode, Bevan. You can find her links down in the comments below. Well guys, that's just what we think. Do you agree that Iroh is the MVP? Is it Katara, or is it just Cabbage Man. Oh my cabbages! Whatever you think, let us know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. <laughs>